Good morning, everybody. Glad that you're all here on this beautiful spring day. My name is John Mayer, and as a member of the Church Council, I'm really happy to welcome you to Millwoods United Church this morning. We are a spiritual community where you can explore your purpose and place. And today, on this beautiful morning, many of us are here in person, while others are joining us live on Facebook. At Millwoods United, we celebrate and mourn together. We care for one another and our neighbors, and we confront the mysteries of life and love. We welcome everyone, regardless of belief, sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression, and cultural background. As an affirming congregation, we work to make the church a place where all of us feel safe. We acknowledge the land. This building is the traditional on the traditional land of the Treaty First Six Nations. All of us are treaty people for which we give thanks. So welcome to everyone. Friends, every day at Millwoods United, people join in and reach out and make a difference. And to learn more about this work, I direct your attention to What's the Buzz, the e-newsletter. It's distributed every Thursday afternoon, and it's also available on our church website. If anyone has something that they want shared today, please come forward. I have a couple of announcements that I will start with. Um, Terry Staley is moving, or will be soon, and she's looking for reputable movers. So if anybody knows of somebody who could help out uh, with this move for Terry, Terry's just at the back. Maybe you could talk to her after church. Another announcement is the uh, Spring Craft Market happens in two weeks on Saturday, May the 7th, from 10 until 4 o'clock. We need your volunteer help to make this event a success. Please check out Thursday's What's the Buzz for a list of jobs that you can volunteer for. Kathy Bailey also has a list of jobs that you can check out with her after church today. Thanks, everybody, for getting involved in this really worthwhile fundraiser. Uh, one final announcement. And then, Don, I think you want to come? Okay, one final announcement from me. Um, Ian's retirement, if you haven't heard, is happening next week. Um, we have a setup and take down crew of people that we need to uh, get to help us uh, set things up here. There is a sign up on the coat rack at the back. If you're interested in, and available to help out with setup and or takedown, please sign your name there. If you're planning on attending and you haven't already uh, advised the church that you will be here, please call Liliana this week in the church office and let her know that you're coming. That's it for me. Don, you're next. Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to the congregation of Millwoods United Church for once again uh, <laughs> generous financial donations uh, for the provide a lunch for the inner city pastoral ministry at the Bissell Center. Uh, we delivered 208 bagged lunches. Again, thanks to all your support. Uh, it's, it's been three years of COVID where we've just purchased items as opposed to making sandwiches like we did in the past. And for those of you that have served in the past, I just wanted to share this with you. As we pulled in front of the Bissell Center, both our cars were full and uh, uh, the pastoral team didn't come out right away so we're standing there milling around with the people in front of the, the Bissell Center and uh, generous offers by the people of the street to help us haul the boxes in the pastor uh, finally come, comes walking out and uh, he says oh this person's been giving us trouble this morning so we just carried the boxes and there's a person totally wrapped head to toe in a blanket sleeping on the front sidewalk so we just walked around that person and kindly acknowledged the lady in the little corner by the entrance to go in who had a small little fire going. Um, not sure if it was going to start smudging or what they were going to do. But just thought I'd share that for those of you that have been there before and experienced uh, <laughs> that. So we even had our little experience just in uh, unloading the vehicle uh, last week on Easter Sunday. So thank you once again. Thanks. And any other announcements at all? Nope. Okay. So seeing no more hands, I now welcome 
and who will lead us in this morning's worship. I think that's yours. Thank you, John, and good morning to everyone on this beautiful spring morning. There are several reasons why I'm glad the weather is so wonderful today. And one is that all the hymns I've chosen for today are about springtime, so whew, that's good. <laughs> this is also my second to last Sunday with you all. I didn't really believe the end was coming until after Holy Week, but now that Palm Sunday, Good Friday, and Easter are behind us, I can see the reality of this change which is so fast approaching. I hope that many people will be here next Sunday and that many will also stay afterward for a luncheon. I've been here for just over eight years, but the past two years have been afflicted by COVID-19. So I'm pleased that despite the large numbers of people who are now infected, that restrictions are lifting and people are coming back to church in person. Finishing my career here has been a significant blessing for me. And I hope that we can say thank you farewell and au revoir next week in style. Next week I'm going to return to a sermon series that I started in January on the seven Roman Catholic sacraments and which I halted as Lent began in March. Next week the focus will be on the final sacrament of last rites and I pray that this will give us the spiritual nurture we need as I retire and as Millwoods United springs forward to its next chapter under new ministry. This morning, which is the second Sunday of Easter, I return to a theme I touched on last week, how the central teaching of death and resurrection can be enhanced or degraded, depending on our orientation to the Bible and to church. As for the rest of this time of song, silence, and prayer, I hope it will fill our hearts and minds with an awareness of how Easter's truths are always here for us. And now we light the Christ candle to begin this morning. John will help with us as we stay seated and sing a refrain from an Easter hymn. Friends, may the light of our candle symbolize the presence of the risen Christ in our hearts, an undeniable proof of Easter's new life. And now I offer us a gathering prayer. Friends, please pray with me. God, who is love, we've gathered in response to love's call. We may have come with fears and intentions, doubts or questions. And with gratitude for the past and with hope for tomorrow, we come to be awake to the love that is here for us in this moment. May the rhythms of prayer help us to let go of tension and enjoy the beauty and wonder that's always here for us. And we offer this prayer in the name and the spirit of the risen one, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And now let us stand as we're able to sing an opening hymn. It is from Voices United, number 289. It only takes a spark. Soon. 
Now, friends, we've come to the part of the service called This Is Us. Today, Lindy Mayer will read for us a children's book, and she'll be followed by John Mayer, who will read today's gospel passage. So, first to Lindy. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. The book that I'm going to read this morning is called A Peaceful Goldfish, and you might find that you are definitely in this story. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. The author's names are Soj Anna Chaim and Lori Joy Smith. I am a peaceful goldfish. Sometimes things go wrong. I can't calm down. Me neither. I have an idea. I imagine I'm a peaceful goldfish. I take a slow, big breath in. Then I let out all my air to make bubbles in my bowl. I have an idea too. I'm a mighty elephant. I take a slow, big breath in, then I let out all my air to make a soft, trumpeting sound. Come on, I'm a rainbow pinwheel. I take a slow, big breath in, then I let out all my air to spin round and round. Oh, I'm a fluffy dandelion. This one's my favorite. I take a slow, big breath in. Then I let out all my air to send my wishes up high. Look. I'm a swinging wind chime. I take a slow, big breath in. Then I let out all my air to make beautiful music. I know I'm a gentle dragon. I take a slow, big breath in. Then I let out all my air to make a bright fire. That one I'm not so sure of. <laughs> now I'm a growing flower. I take a slow, big breath in and stretch to the sky. Then I let out all my air and bring my hands to my heart. I am calm. I am calm too. Ready? Ready. And that's the end, but there is an author's note. Dear little peaceful goldfish, 
Sometimes you may feel mad, sad, frustrated, or disappointed. It's okay to feel that way. Do you want to know something? You're not alone. And other kids and adults can feel the same way too. Learning to take deep breaths is one of the skills that can make you feel better. When you practice being a dragon, a pinwheel, or a peaceful goldfish, you can remember how to take those deep breaths when you're not feeling your best. Think about some of the animals you love or the activities you like to do. How else can you take a slow, big breath in and let it out? Try it. <laughs> now, how do you feel? <laughs> Happy breathing. And that's from Shos Anna, the author of the book. Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Like it works. Uh, let us pray. May our hearts and minds be open so that as we listen to a passage of ancient scripture, we might find wisdom for our living today. Amen. Today's reading is ending of the Gospel of John. John 20, 19 to 31, the Doubting Thomas. On the evening of the day of Jesus' resurrection, the first day of the week, the doors were locked in the room where the disciples were for fear of the temple authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Having said this, the Savior showed them the marks of the crucifixion. The disciples, the, the disciples were filled with joy when they saw Jesus, who said to them again, Peace be with you, as Abba God sent me, so I'm sending you. After saying this, Jesus, Jesus breathed, on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you retain anyone's sins, they are retained. It happened that one of the 12, Thomas, was absent when Jesus came. The other disciples kept telling him, we've seen Jesus. Thomas's answer was, I'll never believe it without putting my finger in the nail marks and my hand in the spear, into the spear wound. On the eighth day, the disciples were once more in the room, and this time Thomas was with them. Despite the locked doors, Jesus came and stood before them, saying, Peace be with you. And then to Thomas, Jesus said, Take your finger and examine my hands. Put your hand into my side. Don't persist in your belief, unbelief, but believe. Thomas said in response, My Savior and my God, Jesus then said, you've become a believer because you saw me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs as well, signs not recorded here in the presence of the disciples. But these have been recorded to help you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the only begotten, so that by believing you may have life in Jesus' name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to you this morning. Friends, in last week's sermon, I talked about why I'd reflected again on the story of the empty tomb as found in Mark, instead of the reading suggested by the revised common lectionary. Every Easter, the lectionary prefers the story from John in which Mary Magdalene mistakes the risen Christ for a gardener. Today, I've returned to the lectionary, and so we just heard the next verses from the Gospel of John. This is the story called The Doubting Thomas, and it includes the end of that gospel. Quote, Jesus performed many other signs, signs not recorded here in the presence of the disciples. But these ones have been recorded to help you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the only begotten, so that by believing you may have life in Jesus' name. Next Sunday, which will be my last one here, I will reflect on a text also suggested by the lectionary, 
and which is from the next chapter of John. Like the 20th chapter, the 21st ends John's gospel after a flurry of details about a fishing trip, a breakfast, and an interrogation of Peter by Jesus. And it, and it concludes with a final sentence, which I find evocative, and which happens to be about the only thing I like from the 21st chapter, quote, there are also many other things that Jesus did, but if every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. The 21st chapter of John is clearly not written by the anonymous evangelist known as John. And so it's usually called the appendix to John because the bit that we heard this morning is clearly an original ending. But next week's story in which the risen Christ tells his friends to fish on the other side of their boat fits well with my theme. So we're gonna hear this story, just not from John 21. We will hear its original version, which is from the fifth chapter of Luke. In Luke, the story is from the beginning of Jesus' ministry and not from after his resurrection. Frankly, I wish the lectionary never suggested readings from the appendix to John, its so-called 21st chapter, just as it never suggests any readings from the bogus addition to the Gospel of Mark, verses 9 through 20, and to which I made mention last week. But does this really matter? Perhaps not. Being born from above or born of the Spirit, well, that's been true in my life in moments of grief followed by joy. And this would have been the case regardless of my knowledge of or beliefs in the various stories of the resurrected Christ. As a part partisan of the church, I find sustenance in Paul and in Mark, but not in the endings of Matthew, Luke, or John all of which are based upon a Mark's original version of the empty tomb, and all of which add some spurious tales of Jesus as a resuscitated corpse. Today's reading is one of the passages that annoys me. In John's tale of Mary Magdalene and the gardener, the risen Christ tells Mary not to touch him, but in the next verses which we just heard, the risen Christ tells the skeptic Thomas to touch his wounds so that he might believe. But regardless of whether these verses have helped or hindered people to follow the way of Jesus and the way of the cross over time, the inability of Jews in the first century to be freed from Roman tyranny by a new king and their inability to find a new God like Jehovah to worship, those remained. Jerusalem really was destroyed by Rome in the first century. Jehovah's beautiful temple really was taken apart stone by stone. And so for these reasons, the stories of the execution of Jesus the Christ had relevance to Jews like Mark and Paul in the first century. And they still have relevance to us today since we continue to live with too much violence, too much destruction, too much human fallenness. For the past 11 years, I've been an ordained minister of the United Church. And for all those years, I've given thanks for the work of the church, the stories we retell every Sunday, and the enlightenment we try to glean from our work and from these stories. It's true that the sliver of text that speak to me is narrower than most members of the church, but I cherish them and I've tried to preach from them. So I feel gratitude for the United Church of Canada and for the people of the communities of faith I've been called to serve, particularly the people of Millwood's United Church. But I've been disappointed that the church has been unable to fully live into the path of death and resurrection it helped to open for me. Today is a challenging time to be a Christian, I think. Mainline and liberal denominations like the United Church of Canada have declined for many decades and are just a tiny sliver of their former state. And fascist politicians keep maintaining gains among greater sectors of the population with terrible effects from the official spread of deadly disinformation about the COVID-19 pandemic to the burning of the Amazon rainforest in Brazil to Russia's invasion of Ukraine 
I wish the United Church had been able to feel the grief associated with the sober assessment of its prospects, and so had helped it and other religious and spiritual institutions find new ways of living into faith, hope, and love. I wish that radical activists have been better able to stand against those who support cancer-like economic growth, environmental destruction, and attacks on human rights and democracy. But the church and the world are as they are, and so I try to accept them. Do I doubt that the tales of Jesus' resurrected, res resuscitated corpse from Matthew, Luke, and John? Yes. Do I doubt the ability of the church to admit its own death and so rise to something new? Yes. Do I doubt the ability of humanity to find a way out of climate disaster or war? Yes. But I don't doubt new life. I don't doubt that the experience of being born of the Spirit gives us a taste of the eternal love from which we have all come and to which we all return. Did Jesus' body suddenly appear in a locked room on the day that his tomb was found empty? No. Did he briefly appear there again on the eighth day to show Thomas his wounds? No. At the same time, do we want to build communities of faith, hope, and love with which to care for our wounds and those of our neighbors and with which to proclaim that love is all and love is everything? Yes. And this is something I'm sure we will continue to do for as long as we have breath and for as long as God's spirit of love continues to move amongst us. And so, for this glorious Easter truth, I can only say, thanks be to God. Amen, amen, and amen. And now as a hymn of response, let us stand as we're able to sing from Voices United 578, as a fire is meant for burning.
Friends, as you know, we haven't been passing offering plates during the pandemic. Instead, they're placed at the entrance to this sanctuary. And you'll also find information about ways to make a donation at millwoodsunited.org. Just look for the How to Give link. It's on every web page, and it includes information about different ways we can support the church. And we're so grateful for the new ways people have found over two years to join in, reach out, and make a difference. Thank you. And now, as the offering plate is brought forward to the communion table, let us stand to sing, Behold, Behold. God or the Easter one, you're the dancing spirit of life, so we offer these gifts and thanks for hope returned, for the mystery of grace, and for the promise of resurrection. Amen. Please be seated. And friends, we now take a minute to share any joys or concerns or thank yous with each other, and this morning I'll begin. Today I ask for prayers for myself and my family. Last Sunday, my first cousin, Dean Rutherford of Markdale, Ontario, died of COVID-19. He was just 61 years old and he had lived with a weak heart since he was treated for cancer in his 20s. He's the first of my cousins to die and his death has given me a small intimation of how terrible it must be to lose a sibling. So I ask for prayer for Dean's family and all the many people who loved him. And Linda Baker asks us to pray for her sister, Bernice Taylor. She's living in long-term care in Calgary. Bernice is almost 92 years old. She sleeps most of the day and is now mostly bedridden. Linda and David were planning to go down to see her in Calgary, and perhaps they're there this morning. And so we pray for comfort for Bernice and for Linda, David, and all who love Bernice Taylor. And does anyone here have a joy or concern or thank you that they want to share? If so, you can just raise your hand and a member of the welcome team will bring a microphone. And we've got Wanda. Last week, my 15-year-old grandson, Owen, uh, was supposed to be tested for some allergies, but his lungs are in such bad condition that they couldn't and they did a pulmonary test on him and he can only expel 30 percent so he's undergoing a pile of tests right now and um, he is feeling better since tuesday but he's not great and he does still have that hue of blue gray about him wow. so he um lucky for him he's off lawn mowing duty this year um, because of his lungs. However, we're hoping he gets better and we could use some prayer. Well, thank you for sharing that tough news, um, Wanda. I'll go. I don't know if you all know this, but I can't believe you don't. Um, Team Burton, Tim's children, Killian and Oliver, who they're, they play with uh, Justice, uh, they, they curl with Justice and Colby, coach is Tom Kitagawa. They won the provincial U18 boys, and they're off to Oakville. So Friday morning, the four boys and Tom go. Friday noon, Tim goes. Jill and Nate wait till after school. Nate's the alternate. Rob is flying on Sunday. He's staying with his brother. It's just chaos, but it's really exciting to be a part of the family at this point. Well, 
Congratulations, Burton boys. That's fantastic news. And friends, seeing no more hands, I now invite us into a time of deeper prayer. Please pray with me. God of grace, today we give thanks for springtime and new life. May we find comfort and joy with one another as we journey through this season of change and hope. We've survived and grown during another winter, and now we've gathered to sing in joy and to work for a world that better matches the promises of Easter. We're grateful for this community of belonging, a place of nurture and one in which to carry out a mission of justice and love in this neighborhood and in the entire world. God of Easter faith, there are many reasons for which we might feel fear. The persistence of COVID-19, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, many other instances of violence or destruction. So we pray that in the face of our fields, we may find the path to trust in the transformations of the grief of Good Friday into Easter joy, may we know in our bones that new life is here for us. In the transformations of Easter, may we enter a place beyond our doubts and fears, a place where trust is unshakable and where gracious healing abounds. God of Easter hope, today we pray for all who suffer for the lonely and those who live with domestic strife, for those without adequate work or health care or food or cultural opportunities. We continue to pray for refugees in their tens of millions. May we work with others to bring the basics of life to each of us to oppose terror and war between nations or within nations. May the light we see today shining out of Jesus' empty tomb continue to guide us toward love. God of healing, some of us are hurting today. May we know your presence during times of pain, when we're grieving, when we feel alone. And now let us take a moment in silence in which we might remember others in prayer. Loving God, these are our concerns and joys which we lift to you. And now let us bring all of our prayers into one as we sing together the prayer that Jesus taught us, singing. And finally, to close this time of worship, let us stand as we're able to sing from Voices United, number 187, The Spring Has Come.
Dear friends, we are an Easter people, and so we leave this place knowing that we do so with the love of God, which is our source, the grace of Jesus the Christ, which has arisen to new life in each of us, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, both now and always. Amen. strength of 